2007, uh, the defendant was convicted of three counts of homicide by intoxicated use of a motor vehicle, um, a count of injury by intoxicated use of a motor vehicle, and then uh, endangering safety by use of a dangerous weapon and disorderly conduct with the use of a dangerous weapon. Um, that was summarized in some of the um, reports the court received. Um, and essentially, um, the defendant served a, or was serving a significant prison sentence for those convictions. Um, the total sentence, um, by my calculation, was 51 years of initial confinement and, and 19 years of extended supervision. Um, and he's been serving that sentence since 2007. Um, while in the Wisconsin state prison system, the defendant also, in, in 2017, uh, was convicted in Dodge County for battery by prisoner. Uh, that was the instance we heard of in trial where uh, Mr. Skolman attacked a, a corrections officer um, in uh, Dodge County. Um, that resulted with a, a fine disposition, possibly due to the sentence he was otherwise already serving. Um, so the, the prior record is obviously incredibly aggravated. It's concerning. The defendant has previously to this case killed three people. Um, and now um, he caused the death of, of um, Tim. Um, the victim impact statements the court's already received and um, what I anticipate the court will hear from both um, Tim's uh, mother and father today um, will speak to the loss much better than I can. Um, and I'm not going to be that presumptuous to, to talk at length about that. Um, but he was, a, he was a young man. Yes, obviously serving a, a sentence in the, in the prison system, but had a long life ahead of him. Um, he was um, quite young at the time Mr. Skolman took his life. Um, and that's, you know, a, a shame. It, to some extent, we send people to prison for a variety of reasons. One of the reasons is rehabilitation. Um, and um, that was still a realistic possibility for, for Tim to, to lead a, a productive life and, um, and, and have a, a benefit to, to uh, this community. And, and unfortunately, that's, that's not going to be a possibility. Um, Mr. Uh, Skolman's conduct towards Mr. Washington, as the, as the court saw, really, I, there, there, it's not a credit to Mr. Skolman that that's an attempted crime. Um, really, every effort that I think reasonably one could take to cause Mr. Washington's death was taken, and by the grace of, of God or, or whatever, um, that was not um, in the cards, and Mr. Washington lived. But that crime itself, too, is incredibly serious. Um, particularly when we consider the defendant's motivations for that. The court heard about that, the lengthy um, history of Mr. Skolman in that respect. Um, and it's also, I think, relevant to kind of considering his views after the point, or after the crimes. I, I don't really see a significant mitigating circumstance in this case, respectfully. Um, there's not been really remorse. To the contrary, the letter the court received, written by Mr. Skolman, I think would have been somebody who uh, expresses a, a measure of pride in his work, um, that this is a fulfillment of a goal that he's had for some time. And unfortunately, in this case, Mr. Neighbors and Mr. Washington were the uh, victims of that. Um, so I, you know, we don't always make recommendations for the, the maximum uh, to the court to be run consecutively. I, I think it's appropriate. Uh, the, the galleon factors, the, the nature of the conduct, the need to protect the public, um, I think all stream punishment for engaging in the conduct he engaged in and the reasons why he engaged in that conduct, I think all weigh in favor of the court um, imposing the maximums on, on all counts consecutive. Um, that's, um, I, that's, that's the recommendation. There are, um, as I said, victim impact statements, oral ones that uh, victims will give. There, there was a restitution request, Judge. I'd ask for 60 days to determine that, sort all that out. Um, and that's, uh, that's all I have to say. Thank you. All right. Then uh, are there representatives of the victim that wish to, to address the court? You have to use the microphone. Good afternoon, Your Honor, in the court. Um, I've thought long and hard what to say and how to say what I felt like I needed to say on today. I knew I would get an opportunity 
to look at you and for one to tell you you killed somebody that meant a lot Sir, sure, that's gonna that's gonna have to be it. I'm gonna be cool. I'm gonna be cool. That's not. I'm gonna be cool. That's, sir, sir, sir. Okay. talk to him. I came in here level-headed and, and spider. Talk to him. There's decorum that we have to maintain here. I, will, I, will, I understand your emotions are high. I respect that. I'm cool. Thank you. All right, we're leaving. We're, I'll leave the bench until until. Sir, I'm cool. just listen. Now listen. You listen to me. I leave the bench and Mr. Sanders will talk to you. You have a right to address me, but you may not disrupt or cause a dangerous situation in my courtroom, which you just did. So you talk, if Mr. Sanders tells okay, me. Okay, Your Honor, just, I apologize. I, now, okay. you're gonna be, okay. you, you, you interrupt me one more time and you're out of here. You let me finish. So I'm telling you, Mr. Sanders will talk to you. And when I come back, Mr. Sanders says you understand what you're to do in a responsible way, I'll allow you to address me. Otherwise, I'm going to have to have you ejected from my court. Okay. All rise. Circuit Court for Interest One is again in session. Your silence is commanded. You may be seated. So you wish to address me, sir? Yes, sir. Go right ahead. June 3rd, 1997. God bless me, my son's mother and myself with the task of being a parent of Timothy Neighbors Jr. It's one of the most happy, proud days of my life. I happened to be incarcerated at the time that my child was born. so. I, I called my mom and gave my mom the task of going to see my very first child for the first time. So I wasn't able to call her until the next day. And I called, I was anxious. I said, Ma, how do he look? She said, he a cute little boy, that's your baby. She says, one thing, he got a mole in the middle is his, his forehead. In my mind, he just got a big mold covering his whole face. She said, don't worry, he's okay. I was happy. That was my child. The day that I got the call that my child had been assaulted was in fact the worst day of my life because I knew that it was serious by the tone of my son's mother's voice, get here. And I did just that. October 21st of 2022, the coward picked on two 25-year-old kids who didn't know him, had no beef with him, no kind of interactions whatsoever. Just on their way to do their morning duties and report back to their cell. In fact, my child even, as quick as he could, diffuse the situation. Let's go, we don't, we don't got time for that this morning. And you study advanced and ch chased them and assaulted them. It's a lot of people that wanted to be here that had to work. This courtroom would have been filled up. You can see it from behind me, the love that my child had. He wasn't a nobody. You put my family and my people through uh, an immense pain that we'll never get over. My life would never be the same. And I ain't gonna take up too much time, but what I will tell you is I want you to go back to your cell and you figure out what, 
what get back gang mean. And I mean that from the bottom of my heart. If this happened on the streets, I would have done nothing but hunted you down and I would be on trial for my life myself. And that's all I gotta say. Good afternoon. I'm sorry. I tried to write you a letter to explain how the situation has turned my family upside down. But every time I put pen to paper, paper is soaked in tears. So I couldn't write you a letter. Must did not dislike this. <sighs> yes, he was incarcerated. Yes, he made mistakes. He was not perfect by far. But he was still mine. He was mine. And he had no right to take him away from us. He was my son. He was a great son. He's a brother. He's an uncle. He's a cousin. He is love despite his faults. Attorney Saunders touched on the fact that he was trying to de-escalate the situation. There was no reason for my baby to lose his life today. None whatsoever. One of his sisters is in the courtroom today. The other sister, I believe you have her impact statement as well. She's 10. She's scared to face him. A 10-year-old is scared that she's going to have nightmares about the man that murdered her brother. That says a lot. She's 10. She should not have to go through that. My 17-year-old should not have to go through that. I should not have to go through this. This hurts so bad. I go to see my son frequently. I'm looking at dirt. At dirt. I miss him. The things that irritated me the most about him, I miss so much. I would give anything to bring him back. So today I ask you, and again, I know it's a mute point because he's serving dang near a life sentence as is, but on behalf of myself, on behalf of my family, we request that you give him life without the possibility of parole to be served consecutively to everything else. That's it. <laughs> Ms. Sawada, Ms. Koenig. I'll address the court, Your Honor. The court here today is in a rather unique position. Um, not only did the court have the opportunity to hear the trial on the facts, but also um, the trial on the NGI. Um, the court learned a lot of information about Mr. Skolman. Um, Mr. Skolman, I will tell the court, um, if it wasn't made clear at the trial, um, that he did have a difficult upbringing. Um, he, his father was absent, um, and his mother was absent at times as well. He spent some time in foster care, um, and as the state has indicated, he does have that criminal history. Um, so at an early age, he was struggling um, with various issues. As the court heard, um, he does self-report that he has been um, suffering from mental illness, um, although he probably wouldn't call it mental illness, um, but since about age 12. Um, he does have a grandparent um, that was diagnosed with schizophrenia, and at times his, his mother has had some issues as well. Um, I do want um, the court to know and, and the victim's families to know um, that Mr. Skolman did not uh, pursue an NGI defense to try to get out of his current situation. Um, the NGI defense actually came um, from Attorney Zawada and I um, because we had received some letters from Mr. Skolman and we could tell that there, there were some issues going on. Um, 
we recognize mental illness. I know the court is on, on the treatment court for mental health court. Um, just because the jury didn't find that Mr. Schoolman was appropriate for the NGI plea, he is still mentally ill nonetheless. Um, he does need some treatment in the institution. He is going to be in the institution for the rest of his life. Um, I know the court doesn't have many options today. We'd ask the court um, to take his mental illness into consideration um, and treatment needs, and we'd ask the court to impose a life sentence concurrently uh, with the possibility of parole. Thank you. Joshua Schoolman, under the law, you have a right to address me now. Is there anything you'd like to tell me, Mr. Schoolman? Can you hear me? Yes. All right. First of all, I don't have mental illness. I don't have a mental defect. All right. You guys have the mental illness. You have the mental defect. All right. I am connected to what my gods and my goddesses meant to me to be. I am a weapon that I was meant to be. I've been fashioned this way for my entire life. I simply do what I am meant to do. Weapon does not ask questions, does not feel remorse. A lot of it has been talked about remorse. I don't even know what that is. I don't feel emotion like that, and I don't care to. Those forms of weakness have nothing for me. They mean nothing to me. Remorse for the first four parasites I killed back in 2000 and whatever, six, it wasn't an accident. Again, my lawyers thought that it would be a good thing for me to act like I was remorseful, and they took it upon themselves to try to you know, speed through the process so that I could get out earlier. That's all the lawyers. That's, that's you guys' game, your little games that you play. I don't care. What do I care? Extermination of these parasites is all that I care about. And that's it and that's all. All rise. The court branch one is again in session. Your silence is commanded. You seated. All right. <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. Skolman. It, it is now my responsibility, Joshua Skolman, to pass sentence upon you. I now extend you to the same analysis that I give to every defendant under the law. I must consider the protection of the public, punishment of the defendant, defendant's rehabilitative needs, and deterrence. So, first of all, I have listened to lots of testimony, and again, you know, you addressed me and the courtroom about, you know, what is your view of faith. Um, I'm a person of faith. Only God creates life. Every child is a gift from God. That's what the victims were trying to say. Every life has value. Every person has a right to grow up and to live. We, as a species, have this terrible, terrible dark side where some of us, because of a religious belief or a political belief or whatever, believe that anybody who is different than us or disagrees with us 
must be exterminated. Hor is horrific. And that's what really is the so scary part of Mr. Skolman is he clearly believes that. And, you know, I agree with this jury. I don't think that's a mental illness. That's, that's a thoughtful conviction. And when one arrives at that conviction, do I need to recite historically the horrible crimes that have been done in the name of I am a weapon and I am a purifier? It just causes, it causes one to pause and almost lose, lose their breath. I say to the victim and the victim's family, as a person of faith, justice is divine. I am, I am the secular, in, secular creation of somebody who is supposed to do justice. But I understand your view. But remember, justice is divine. There is a day of reckoning. That's what all, all of us believe. I today am simply an instrument of, of the state's policy. And what is that policy? Our civilized society says there is nothing valued more than life. And if somebody intentionally takes the life of another, that is the highest crime that can be committed in this state. The court believes there, there is no other option available to the court, not only based upon everything the court heard, but exactly what the defendant addressed the court on. He, as he says, is a weapon. And he is, as he says, sent to do and use that weapon. And in this case, it was an execution, pure and simple. It was the victim's family of every right. Absolutely, there is no, there is no other way to understand this except their boy was in the wrong place. At the, it could have been anybody. It did not matter at all. And fortunately for Mr. Washington, he just was able to avoid the calamity as well. So considering really the protection of the public and the words of the defendant himself, on count one, it's the sentence of the court of the judgment of the law that you be confined in the Wisconsin State Prison for the rest of your natural life and that you are never to be eligible for extended supervision. You will never be released from the state prison system. And that sentence is consecutive to any sentence you're now serving. Then on count two, I will sentence you to 25 years in the Wisconsin State Prison System. I will likewise make that sentence consecutive to any sentence you're now serving. On count two, as conditions of extended supervision, you get a compass evaluation, but I'm not going any further than that because it'll never come to that. Then um, I will find that on count one, I will allow the state to submit to the court a um, restitution order, for, but I believe the crime victim compensation panel has already paid a number. So I will order that $5,000 number, which has already been paid by the compensation panel, to be part of the restitution order. Does the, does the state seek anything else today? Uh, no, that was the only thing. All right, and that concludes the matter. Thank you very much.